In this video, we are starting 6.6 .6 and 6.6 .6 is about genetic code. DNA and English both are languages. One cell, when it divides, it gives that information to its progeny, its daughter cell, so that it can also make the same kind of protein that its father or the parental cell used to make. So into this video, we'll, into this video, we'll like to, into this video, we would like to compare genetic code with language English. English has 26 alphabet. While DNA has only four. The alphabet in a word in English language can vary from one to two to many. But in DNA, it is fixed which is 3. In each word of DNA, there will always be only 3 alphabets. The alphabets are A to Z, while in DNA the alphabets are A, G, C, T. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. Let's say if you want to make a word which is uh, let's say five alphabets bigger one two three four five then this letter the probability of this alphabet this the probability of this word to exist will be 1 by 26 because you have got 26 letter alphabets and out of that you can take one multiplied by 1 by 26 multiply by 1 by 26 1 by 26 1 by 26 so this will be the probability of a five letter word to exist in in english language randomly now let us see the probability of a random word but i already told you the uh, length of a word in dna is fixed and that to be three and we have got only four alphabets then the probability of this any random letter to exist in dna is one by four into 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 it is 1 out of 64 then there has to be 64 that we call something 64 different combination of words and this different combination of words in dna we we know as codon so there will be 64 codon which can code for different kind of words but in DNA, these words represent a deeper meaning because one word is denoting one amino acid. One word is equal to one amino acid. Generally, we'll see some exceptions are there. Now, why do we bother about amino acid? Because the product the final product of any cistron or a gene is a protein and protein is nothing but a polymer of amino acid so all the possible words that can exist in dna as a language are being given here these words have got specific property that we are going to learn today uh, let us try to see it the very first feature will be the codon is a triplet and that we have already seen and these are 64 in number these 64 triplet can be divided into 61 codon and 3 codon. 61 codon are directly coding for one amino acid respectively. And 3 codon have got specific role assigned to them. They are stopping codon. Now you must be wondering that where is the starting codon if we have got three codons which are coding for to stop the reaction to stop the polymerization of a protein then why not there is a starting codon but there is a starting codon and that starting codon is AUG that we have discussed into the transcription and AUG also codes for methionine. So as you can see right here that we have got several 
stopping codon right here UGA UAA and UAG these are three stopping codon and AUG is your starting codon which also codes for methanine these codons are unambiguous and specific means one specific codon is being assigned one particular amino acid or one particular work which would be to stop the reaction so that is why they are unambiguous but on to the other hand okay let us from one side one triplet can will code for one amino acid specifically but one amino acid can be coded by different triplets you can see proline is being coded by four codons the interesting point that you can observe right here the codons are ccu ccc cca and ccg both first and second position is constant and the third position is variable u c a g and we know that we have got only four different letters so if we have used all different probabilities that means that this last alphabet or this last nitrogenous space pair could be anything when we are coding for the proline and this is known as the wobble position the next property is that these codons are universal whether you are a bacteria or an elephant these are same for bacteria as well as for the elephant these codes are universal and the next is that we have already seen that AUG is the starting codon and as well as the methionine coder if DNA is a language and you are writing something there can be some spelling mistakes as well and these spelling mistakes are known as mutations Let us say the let us say that I take a word example. You can add an alphabet. You can remove an alphabet. The same thing is going to happen into the DNA as well. All the words in DNA are composed of three letter. And these word let us say are a U G C C U A U C C A C and G A U. If you add delete a word, if you delete a letter, then you can change the sequence completely. And now this cannot be read. The very nice example is being given right here. Ram has a Ram has red cap. If you add something, then Ram has you now you cannot read it. Same as if you add something, let's say two alphabets, then again you cannot read anything. But let's say if you have added something like which is composed of three letters, then it has become a codon in itself, and now you can read the sentence. Now Ram has dash red cap the sequence has not changed but somehow you have included a new word into the sentence so these different permutation combination of adding and subtracting the sequence adding and subtracting nucleotide base pairs from the sequence is known as mutation one very prominent example of this kind of mutation is sickle cell anemia Into the sickle cell anemia, an amino acid which is aspartic acid is being changed with another amino acid which is valine. Now let us get back on to the table. So if you try to see right here that aspartic acid is being replaced by valine. So initially it either it could be GAU and GAC which is coding for aspartic acid and GUU and GUC which is coding for valine. 
if somehow you are able to change a to u which is you are changing the word okay so you are not adding or subtracting it you're changing the changing the alphabet and by virtue of which the word itself got changed so hence the aspartic acid which is a hydrophilic amino acid got changed with the valine which is a hydrophobic amino acid and that had a drastic impact onto the protein structure and there comes the phenotype of the disease which is known as sickle cell anemia when we added the sequence right here we have changed the frame as you can see that we have changed the frame so these kind of mutations are known as frame shift mutation now let us come on to the trna now let us discuss another molecule which is known as the trna the adapter molecule the t stands for transfer and obviously it is being given name very consciously because it actually transfers one amino acid from the cytoplasm to the ribosome so that ribosome can make a long polypeptide chain that we are going to see in the translation process into the next video but let us familiarize ourselves with the tRNA so as you can see right here is the secondary structure of the tRNA RNA is a single stranded molecule so if this is the RT if this is the tRNA into its linearized form it it can fold itself like this and it can become the secondary structure so these are the base pairs there are several there are several position that we require to know this is known as the acceptor end this is known as the acceptor end and it is being coded by CAA and this is the anticodon loop onto the anticodon loop we have got another triplet and that triplet is directly proportional to the respective amino acid that tRNA carries if in our cytosol we have got 20 amino acid then we have 20 tRNA different kind of tRNA each of them is carrying a specific amino acid onto itself so this tRNA is very much specific for this amino acid which is serine and this amino acid is very much specific for this t this amino acid which is known as tyrosine since it is just complementary to the codon structure which is go, which is which it is going to read and transfer the amino acid onto the ribosome which we will see into the translation is known as the anticodon loop 